morning, everyone. Ciao, Nicolo. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Good. Ciao, everyone. Welcome. We are here again. We are here again for the third meeting of Sustainability Talks with Lilian Pelle and NNN. Today, we are talking about circular economy and the Green New Deal in the leather business, in the leather sector in Italy. It's going to be a nice dig into what are the problems, the opportunities, and already what the uh, industry is already doing for sustainability. It's an amazing, amazing day today for us. I, for everyone, I just want to make sure for some housekeeping rules, if you have questions, please feel free to set up all your questions in the Q&A section, and then we will have, we will try to read your question during the talks or at the end. Thank you so much. So starting with this, I'm going to introduce you guys, Fabiana. Fabiana works Hello. for Un. Ciao, Fabiana. Ciao. Fabiana works for Unich, and she is the expert of Unich sustainability. So Fabiana will lead the conversation today. And then we have Francesco. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Ciao, Francesco. So Francesco Pepe is the ex expert or still work for Unich, expert on environmental and quality management system. He has 15 years of experience in auditing. Francesco will walk us through on the water treatment and what is the circular economy in the business. And, and then we have Franco, Franco Cavazza, our special guest today and uh, is the chemistry is the chemistry of the of the call today and uh, he is uh, basically is uh, uh, let's say in charge of of uh, is working on a, on an agricultural industry so it's a different industry than than the leather industry but we will see uh, later on how is supporting the circular economy of leather that's actually is a very fundamental role to make sure that the leather is uh, is uh, circular. And this is... Ciao Franco, ciao Franco, good morning. So so we have a, the first question we have we you know we prepare because we want to understand what why why a agricultural company is related to leather and how you guys and how tanning and circular economy can produce fertilizer? Uh, it's a good question because uh, for a lot of people attending to these talks, probably they are wondering why, why you have invited uh, a guy from, uh, from a chemical industry working in the fertilizer and uh, in agriculture issues. We started uh, more than 60 years ago uh, together with the tannery here in Arsignano in Italy because uh, uh, there was a big demand of recovering their byproducts and uh, find out a solution for valorize these products. And uh, after 60 years, we are still here together with the tanning industry, leather industry, to work to develop the processes and the technologies for find out an environmental uh, sustainable solution for the for the byproducts. I call them byproduct, not waste, because for us they are not waste. They are yeah. Raw yeah. Good, product. good, good. It will be fun to listen to you and what you have to say to us. Yeah. And then and then uh, I think it's time to start officially with the first actually the first question to to Fabiana actually we talked about Green New Deal and leather today. So how, uh, uh, what is the biggest impact of the Green New Deal to the leather? Okay, let me share my uh, presentation also because uh, uh, some topics are included in... Okay, I hope uh, you are seeing it. Perfect. Okay. Okay, the European Green Deal is the, uh, we can consider it the uh, agenda 
of uh, uh, European Union's uh, two, uh, two economy uh, sustainable. And uh, for us, uh, but uh, uh, this is a, a topic that involves uh, all uh, economic sectors uh, in, uh, in Europe, the New Green Deal uh, is uh, uh, a strong commitment, of course, uh, but uh, we can consider it uh, also an opportunity, an opportunity to uh, transform uh, the leather business uh, also in a uh, more sustainable uh, sustainable business uh, that can contribute to the goals of the uh, European Green uh, New Deal. The main uh, goal of uh, uh, the Green Deal is uh, the uh, neutrality, uh, the climate neutrality uh, by 2050. But uh, to reach uh, this, uh, uh, this goal, uh, the European Commission has uh, uh, set out a, um, a lot of uh, uh, different uh, strategies in order to reach uh, uh, this, uh, this goal. Uh, the Italian tiny industry um, is connected and is linked, linked with uh, uh, three blocks uh, of uh, this uh, uh, com also complex uh, uh, strategy. The, um, the main of, uh, uh, of this, uh, uh, this topic uh, is uh, uh, absolutely the circular economy. Also um, with the, the uh, invitations that the Commission has uh, uh, already set out uh, in the Circular Economy Action Plan. But uh, uh, not only, as uh, we uh, will see uh, also with the presentation of uh, our special guest uh, and the friend uh, uh, Franco, uh, the recovering of uh, leather scraps uh, is uh, strongly interconnected with the uh, farm to fork strategies, so to a more sustainable farming. But uh, not only, is also um, Leather sector, Italian leather sector, also impacted positively with the, uh, the recovering of uh, uh, its own uh, scraps, also uh, on a, a more sustainable building and uh, uh, way to uh, to um, design on the way to realize the design products and also construction. But we can also consider the circular economy and sustainable activities from another point of view. Of course, to, uh, to reach the objectives of the uh, Green New Deal, the European Green New Deal, Europe uh, needs also investments, a lot of investments, also private investments. And so in 2020, uh, European Commission defines uh, a sort of taxonomy um, to clearly identify uh, what we can consider as environmental sustainable economic activities. And uh, in these regulations, uh, these activities are identified as uh, uh, which activities that contributes uh, substantially, substantially to one or more of the following uh, uh, environmental objectives. Two objectives are related to climate change. Uh, one on sustainable use and protection of water and uh, uh, sea resources. But one very important pillar is uh, transitions to circular economy. And also the taxonomy define uh, what we can intend as a circular economy. Probably do you know that there are a lot of definitions of uh, uh, circular economy, but we want to uh, focus on this uh, uh, objective uh, and the legal uh, definitions. Yeah, indeed, uh, Fabiana, sorry, I sorry. To, because this is a very big topic uh, nowadays, uh, circularity, and it's different sector uh, sees in a different way. Uh, from the apparel industry, circular is reusing the material, having a second life of the material, but but in leather, it's, it's difficult to reuse something where you made the shoes or where you made the bag, how to reuse it. So what, what is actually the meaning in a few words of 
circularity no? for leather? We can consider uh, the main pillars. Uh, of course, uh, the efficiency of uh, uh, resources consumption, as uh, we uh, we saw in our first webinar uh, of our first sustainability talk. But uh, um, also, it's important uh, the uh, the cycling, the recycling, and the recovering of uh, uh, the most part of uh, uh, scraps and waste uh, produced. And uh, this is uh, uh, what uh, um, Italian leather industry um, is doing. But it's also important, and this is why uh, this is the reason why I reported this uh, uh, this definition. Uh, also, um, the uh, European strategy defines uh, as a very important and uh, focus topic. The fact that uh, um, the value of products, materials, and other resources in, in the economy should be maintained for as long as possible uh, in the uh, productive cycle. Why I started with this uh, uh, with disclaimer? Because uh, uh, leather is uh, uh, produced to uh, to be durable. What it means? Uh, it means that uh, leather is a product that, that can uh, guarantee reusability uh, and reparability. For example, we can repair uh, uh, a leather shoes more time. And uh, uh, for example, we cannot repay, repair as well a textile or a, a shoe realized with another material. So this point, also um, set out as a very central and important point uh, um, of, uh, um, from the circular economy action plan uh, is a, a very good point uh, of, uh, uh, of starting and of uh, circularity. But uh, not only, uh, the action plan focus uh, uh, on recovery and recycle uh, practices in the uh, industrial, uh, in the industrial business. And uh, uh, it uh, uh, consider these uh, practices into uh, both in the sense of uh, improving, uh, recovering and uh, recycle activities, but also increasing recycle content in products uh, as raw material in pro for uh, the production of articles, uh, of course, uh, ensuring the performances and, uh, and safety. And this is so another- if I, can, if I can distribute one second, we have a question from Sweda. And thank you Sweda for this question. She's asking, uh, she, she has a brand base in London and she's saying, she's saying I'm sourcing from uh, certified tanneries and how can I recycle chrome tenna leather bags? Or how can, we, uh, how can we dispose the leather bags without harming the environment? So basically, you know, Fabiana, we can see that our main focus here is to the tier one. So everything related to leather production and then not to the finished goods. Yes, but uh, um, we can also uh, talk about, uh, and uh, we see with uh, with Franco that uh, the, uh, there are uh, um, already some uh, some uh, recovering processes that, that we can use uh, to um, to recover uh, uh, chromium or other uh, tanned leather. Uh, Scraps uh, or uh, or waste. Um, the uh, recycle or the recovering uh, uh, at, at the end of life of, of articles, it's not uh, at the moment. Uh, it's not uh, uh, mainly a problem of uh, type or, uh, types uh, of uh, materials, uh, but it's uh, uh, a problem of collection of this type of waste and of uh, disassembling of uh, uh, this. Uh, these articles. Of course, a, a leather bag, uh, a, a bag, uh, respect a shoe is uh, simpler to uh, to recover, but uh, it is possible. It uh, um, it is possible recover uh, uh, leather 
at the end of uh, its life or scraps produced, uh, for example, from uh, uh, leather goods uh, processes. But it depends, uh, not uh, all type of types of leather are uh, uh, recovered. It depends uh, or, uh, from the type uh, uh, of leather, for example. And uh, Fabiana, sorry. Yes. So you said it's, it's possible to, to uh, uh, recover leather, but what about the chemicals? Uh, uh, because of course there is a lot of chemicals depending on the different time. Yes, this is a, this thing, is a, uh, we, mm -hmm. we, Yes, this is a, a, a very interesting point because uh, uh, the uh, the rate of recovering uh, depends, uh, of course, uh, from the types, uh, more than types, uh, than quantity of uh, uh, chemicals products uh, that are included uh, in um, in the in the ladder. So uh, we can uh, uh, we can consider. Re recovered uh, the types, uh, uh, some types of, uh, of leather that uh, are uh, um, chemical, a, a chemistry that can be uh, processed and uh, destroyed uh, with, the, uh, with, with the processes that uh, uh, already are studied and, uh, and put in place. But this, uh, this uh, is not uh, related uh, with the type uh, of uh, tanning, for example. Um, are more uh, um, important uh, the chemicals uh, used uh, in the post tannage and uh, finishing uh, uh, phases, for example. But uh, uh, we can also uh, come into deep on this topic, uh, on this chemical topic uh, in the next uh, uh, talk uh, that uh, we'll have uh, the oh, next yeah, time on the 30, 23rd uh, of, uh, of February. And I think also Franco later on will tell us a little bit more on, the, on, the, on this part, but let's keep it for later. Okay. Can I? Yes, 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 please go ahead, Fabiana. Sorry. Okay, okay. Um, so first of all, uh, uh, leathers is a uh, leather is produced starting from uh, a byproduct of uh, uh, food industry. So, if you are using cow or goat or sheep, uh, uh, if you are produced producing a cow, sheep, and goat leather, you can. Uh, uh, you can claim that uh, your raw materials is uh, 100 100% recycled because uh, uh, your raw material is a byproduct of another industry. In our case, of course, is the food industry. But also some chemicals are byproducts of, uh, uh, of other industries. And this is another important, uh, uh, important point. So can you give us some example, like uh, how does the chrome is harvested or, or the vegetable tanning process, chemicals that we use it, where the chrome come from? Okay, um, probably you know that uh, um, chromium is a, a, a mineral uh, resource uh, that is extracted from uh, chromite, that is uh, uh, the, 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 the mineral, uh, the main uh, mineral. After extractions, the, the uh, mineral is charged into an electric smelting process uh, uh, that produces a metallic form. Um, some of the minerals uh, remain uh, in the slag, uh, and uh, um, from this part, uh, uh, chromium, it, it is extract, chromium uh, is extracted and used for other application. Uh, um, for example, uh, uh, chromium salts uh, for to produce chromium salts for tanning, but also to produce to produce uh, uh, dyes, uh, pigments, uh, and uh, and so on. Uh, vegetable natural tannins uh, uh, instead is uh, of course uh, a, um, a, a natural uh, uh, material. It is uh, one hundred percent uh, plant uh, plant origin. <coughs> And uh, tannins, natural, natural tannins, because there, there are also symptoms, uh, natural tannins are prepared by uh, um, simply by inf like infusion, like uh, to, uh, to make a tea, um, prepared by infusion in, uh, in water 
of uh, wooden trunks or other plant parts uh, that are shredded in, uh, into small pieces. The process happens uh, naturally and uh, it uh, doesn't need any chemicals for the, to, help the, to help the extraction. And the uh, plant, uh, because this is another uh, topic related to, uh, to, to tannins, uh, plants are used uh, derived uh, from sustainable forest uh, because uh, um, for tennis we use forest and non uh, plants uh, or uh, other agricultural uh, products and uh, uh, they derived from a sustainable forest uh, managed uh, in compliance with the uh, forestry and the local uh, legislation. Another important point uh, on uh, uh, natural tannins uh, is that uh, the exhausted wood uh, uh, or other plant uh, parts uh, can use to, after the production of tannins, can use to produce uh, uh, energy and also uh, they can be transformed into pellets uh, for uh, uh, domestic stuffs, for example. And uh, uh, last but not least, not least uh, also the, the water uh, that's used in, in the process are continuously recycled in, uh, in the production of, uh, of tennis after purification, of course, uh, uh, after each uh, uh, production uh, cycle. We have an interesting question that is probably not related to, to, to this, but I want to ask the panelists what they think about. So we have Kimberly Pucci here asking us if the Italian leather industry needs intends to market themselves as Italian leather because it's superior, she's saying, or better than other industry around the world. Of course, you you are uh, <laughs> you are asked this question to uh, the Italian tanning uh, representative, so we uh, cannot be objective. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that on our that. on our reply, but uh, um, of course uh, we uh, we can see also numbers um, of our sector uh, um, with my with the, the my colleagues' uh, uh, presentation. Yes. But uh, um, the, the Italian tanning, uh, uh, as uh, in terms of value, the uh, most important uh, rating uh, rate of uh, uh, of uh, world uh, production of leather. Um, we um, we are developed uh, uh, um, also the uh, our uh, our circular uh, circular model. Uh, based on, uh, um, of course, some uh, some elements that are common to all producers of leather. For example, the, the fact that leather is that, that leather, uh, the heights that heights and skins uh, are byproducts from food industry. But uh, uh, what can distinguish our uh, um, our sect, our industry um, to to others is. Uh, um, the attention to environmental aspects uh, and also the high rate of recovering of scraps, for example, and of course uh, the, the level of uh, uh, research, design, quality performances of products. Uh, yeah, so so we, we can think say that, that we are the best, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good answer anyway. OK, anyway. Anyway, yeah, we can move. We can move. Okay, um, I want to come into deep uh, uh, into the reason why uh, so high rate of uh, leather scraps uh, uh, can be recovered, and uh, uh, mainly, for example, uh, we can uh, um, use our uh, recovered scraps directly into agriculture. So closing the loop of materials. Uh, plants... Uh, and this, uh, uh, Fabiana, actually, this is uh, also what uh, far, uh, Franco Lederal will uh, uh, drive us. And uh, one thing that's in this uh, picture is uh, I see also candies or something like this. Are you, are you making candies with leather? Uh, 
we, we can uh, also make candies with uh, with leather, but uh, now it, uh, some candies uh, um, are produced by leather scraps. Um, as we can as we can see, um, plants uh, uh, create. Uh, plants uh, create uh, uh, their own proteins. Uh, these proteins, uh, um, through feeding, uh, can uh, uh, can be uh, used by animals also to uh, to synthesize uh, uh, they uh, they tissues like uh, collagen. Of course, the collagen is the main materials of leather uh, on of leather scraps, and uh, in to recover these, uh, uh, the, the recovering processes of uh, the leather and the leather scraps uh, um, can use uh, or leather collagen fibers, or can use collagen molecules, or can uh, destroy the, these uh, molecules in uh, uh, smaller molecules uh, like proteins and amino acids in, uh, across a process called uh, hydrolyzation. Uh, what we uh, obtain, uh, so prote um, proteins, for example, can be used as a, uh, raw materials for a food industry, for example, not only for agriculture. And uh, for the food industry, we can produce gelatins for, uh, uh, for jelly, for example, for jelly beans, for uh, also to produce uh, uh, beer or wine. Uh, to produce uh, in the pharmaceutical and nutraceutical sector uh, um, the capsules of uh, medicines uh, or uh, um, fillers. Uh, leather is the... everywhere, Fabiana. Leather is everywhere. We don't see it, but it's everywhere. Yes, uh, almost everywhere. <laughs> But of course, the, uh, the fields of application of uh, uh, material recovered by leather scraps are very uh, uh, um, a multiple uh, application. We can see um, someone uh, of, uh, of that. Also buildings, uh, we, uh, we've already talked about, and chemistry, uh, production of uh, biopolymers, also adhesives. Uh, we can uh, uh, we can use uh, collagen to produce uh, uh, ecological glues, for example, and um, these uh, these glues are uh, biodegradable, uh, and uh, they uh, th these uh, these glues uh, have uh, a very uh, good uh, good properties instead of uh, an artificial or solvent glues uh, normally used uh, in. Uh, in more applications, also in packaging, but uh, also in some fashion applications. Um, we, can, uh, uh, we can use uh, uh, thin, uh, proteins, uh, um, gelatins, and, and so on, but we can use uh, also milled fibers of collagen to produce, for example, uh, uh, so-called bonded leather, that is another material for fashion and design, or this is a very interesting application. We can produce paper with the uh, uh, leather shavings, for example, and uh, uh, the, the, the paper and the packaging produced by, uh, by leather scrap is a very beautiful uh, uh, paper. Also for the grain, uh, for the aesthetic aspect, uh, it's a very good product. Fabian, I think these points are very interesting because really show the circularity of the leather, not because you reuse it, but because from the skin, you take all the a different product and you use for a, a, a different product typology, no? Yeah. And that's really make a full picture that I think we can uh, go ahead also to, to the next step. And actually before to conclude, uh, Fabiana, one uh, uh, last question that we always get also around this uh, part is, is it make sense? Does it make sense to say that one tanning is more sustainable than another tanning? Ah, this is a very good and hot, uh, <laughs> hot topics. Uh, but uh, uh, the answer is uh, uh, no. 
uh, we can't. Um, the, there are uh, different techniques uh, uh, and processes to produce uh, so-called clone-free or leather-free um, leather. But uh, at the moment, uh, we cannot uh, declare the, that uh, there is uh, one type of leather that is better or more sustainable than another one. Uh, why? First of all, uh, it's uh, uh, important to focus on the fact uh, that uh, we have to consider not only the tannage, the tanning phase, but all process. And uh, um, for example, there are some uh, tanning systems uh, uh, like uh, chromium, but it, it is not uh, the, only, uh, the only one that confer a set of properties uh, uh, that other systems uh, of tanning uh, um, can get. Of course, this implies that the use, uh, um, this implies that in the post-tanning uh, stages, we have to, um, to add some chemical substances, a lot of chemical substances to, uh, to add these, uh, these properties. And uh, for example, this, uh, uh, this addition of chemicals uh, generates an higher uh, CO2 of uh, uh, the wastewater, for example, or uh, um, more uh, um, out quantity and more quantity of, uh, um, of waste, for so example. So different, different so what... type of tanning uh, can produce different pollutants uh, in a different way. And, uh, yes. Actually, this was also anticipated from Gustavo that we had in last uh, on the previous uh, uh, talk, uh, where he also said there is not one tanning that is more uh, sustainable. So when we say chrome-free tanning uh, uh, doesn't mean it's more sustainable. I mean, this is a big statement. Uh, it depends yeah. always how the leather is made. Yes, the correct so, answer so is uh, it depends. Yeah, there is a there, there is also an answer in a, a okay. question from Claudia Rondinelde, where she is asking, where she is asking, are the new flower and plant extract using leather production more sustainable than others? And as Fabiana was saying, it depends, right, Fabiana? Yes, it depends. Uh, uh, it depends. Uh, first of all, uh, um, of uh, destination of use of uh, of leather. If I have to realize a footwork, I need uh, um, some uh, uh, technical properties, for example, that uh, uh, not all not all tannages uh, can uh, convert to my material. If I realize uh, a leather bag, I can consider uh, uh, probably other and different type of tannage. But the important things that I think that we uh, need and uh, we have to consider when we uh, when we choose what type of leather we want to use is that we uh, need to consider the impact and the advantages of all production processes and uh, uh, without stopping uh, all uh, at the free claim it's very important to analyze uh, all uh, all the process. So if I can jump on top here, it seems that our uh, uh, the people that are following in us love very much these debates, talking about chrome, non-chrome, or wherever yeah. kind of tanning. We have another question from, from Tim, Timothy Keyworth, where he's asking, will you consider full batch leather more sustainable than chrome? And as per Fabiana direction, we would say it all depends on the how the leather, how the waste waste treatment is treated afterwards. There is no good and bad. It depends on on the way we treat the effluents. Correct, Fabiana? Yes, and also it depends on what um, add, uh, additive uh, and also what chemicals you use. Uh, to replace uh, the properties uh, that uh, uh, other tannage can, uh, tannages cannot confer to, uh, to leather as chromium uh, does. And I think with this, maybe we can move also to Francesco because then he's okay. going to go deeper into the water uh, yes. side, you know, Francesco. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I mean, we can make a full episode only about what is the more sustainable leather. Yes, and there is a lot of questions. There's yeah. so many questions. Life is not lasting for two days without yeah. sleeping at night. <laughs> And just two seconds to share my notes. Yeah. And in the meantime, also I want to mention, I have seen already also people mentioning biodegradable leather. Yeah. And, uh, and that's also a good question. We should pick it up uh, later on if we still have time because everything is biodegradable. The, 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 the problem well, is how does it biodegrade? What is left and, and how long it takes? And in what time? Exactly. Yeah, we, we also can say we do we also can say that with all these new techniques of tanning, we do not have any consistent data. Correct, Fabiana? Yes. We don't have a another... historic we don't we don't have historical data to give us the scientific proof that something is better than others. Correct? Not only we have we have uh, only one uh, one uh, uh, chrome leather process, but we have uh, a lot of different uh, metal-free tanning processes. And so um, it's also difficult to collect the data from each one of these uh, processes. We, uh, we, we made, uh, um, we, we calculated uh, a, a comparative LCA um, in, in, in a project in order to um, calculate the environmental footprint of different type of, uh, uh, of leather. But uh, uh, the results uh, show clearly that uh, there is no one leather that is better to another. Cool, let's go to Francesco. Okay. Francesco. Thank you. Uh, thanks Nicolò for introducing me and good afternoon, good, good morning everyone again. Um, first of all, I'd like to say it's a pleasure to be with you today and to have the opportunity to talk about leather and especially about what is behind le Italian leather in terms of organization, technology and commitment to sustainability. Uh, well, uh, I'd like to discuss with you um, about some topics to find the reason why the business model of Italian tanning industry uh, is a circular model. I, uh, I, I think all of you already know what is a tannery, more or less. But what about the context in which tanneries operate? And what about the place? Um, I'm asking this question because uh, depending on the place, we can find different laws and regulations, uh, different levels of technology, uh, different stimulus from all the stakeholders, uh, for example, customers, citizens living in a specific area, and all the companies of the supply chain. Well, we can say that the place where products in general and uh, leather in particular are possessed is a, an, an essential variable. Uh, the, the first thing to do is to look at the structure of Italian tanning industry uh, to understand what is a, a district, what is a cluster, what is a tanning cluster. And we can see that uh, in Italy, uh, there are almost 1,200 companies with more than 17,000 employees. Uh, the main district for both production and employment is uh, located in Veneto region. It is specialized in the production of uh, large bovine leather for car interiors, furniture, footwear, and leather goods. Um, the second tanning area in terms of production is in Tuscany, where I'm speaking from. And here, uh, Tuscan tanneries produce mainly medium-sized calf and bovine leather, uh, both for uh, footwear and leather goods aimed to high-end market and luxury. And the district of Campania and uh, Lombardy, they are the smaller district, um, produce mainly sheep and goat leather for, uh, for fashion market. Uh, let's focus uh, our attention on data on your left. Uh, dividing national turnover by number of companies, we have an average turnover of uh, 4 million euros. And uh, the average dimension of each company is uh, of um, about 15 employees. So it means they are small, medium enterprises. And 
the question is, uh, what are the implications for an industrial sector with uh, many small, medium companies organized in clusters? Well, uh, here we can find some answers to the question. Uh, first of all, uh, in the district, um, tanneries operate in different market niches. Uh, they have different dimensions depending on the district. For example, uh, in Veneto, the average number of employees is 20, and in Tuscan, it's uh, just 12. But they also have uh, common features. Uh, all these streets are in a very small area. For example, uh, the district of Tuscany is in an area within a radius of just five kilometers. Uh, we can find a lot of subcontractors specialized in just one or two phases of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the process. Uh, for example, mechanical phases as splitting, shaving, embossing, and so on. And there is a, um, a nice flexibility in terms of final product depending on technical requirements and style. So the main feature is that all is in one place. Uh, in one place, we can find chemical companies, machine producers, IT companies specialized in software for tanneries, and also high school and university with uh, specific courses um, about on leather. Um, in this sense, we can define this street as uh, an economic ecosystem where different categories of company can coexist thanks to their diversity. Uh, the last feature of this street is uh, pulverization uh, and its opposite uh, uh, topic, that is uniting of interests. Uh, well, these two topics to get together uh, were the key factors to manage common investments for common goals. And for this reason, uh, in the early uh, 70s of last century, so about 50 years ago, the first center treatment plants for wastewater were uh, designed and built uh, in the tanning industry, in the tanning district, sorry. So uh, this is a part of the circular model of Italian tanning system. Uh, each tannery in this street is connected uh, through a sewage uh, system to large central treatment plants. Uh, which are uh, consortium companies with municipalities and tanneries as, um, as uh, shareholders. The main, uh, the main benefit, the, yes, the essential, the main benefits of centralizing the treatment are, first of all, um, achieving the best efficiency in water treatment, and second, uh, a very accurate uh, monitoring uh, of treatment efficiency because it's much easier to monitor just one big plant than hundreds of small plants. So in this uh, chart, uh, gray arrows represent wastewater coming from production of leather. The part of wastewater came in, coming from chromium tanning bath uh, goes to a plant where chromium is recovered and return it to the tannery that will reuse that chromium with new chromium uh, purchased uh, by chemical suppliers. Uh, so from 30 to 35% of chromium used for uh, tanning can be saved thanks to this recovery. Uh, after this operation, uh, the, the wastewater goes to treatment plant that uh, uh, produces two main outputs. The first one is clean water that goes to, uh, to a river. Uh, clean water means uh, that is compliant with legal limits for each substance. And uh, the other output is um, an excess of sludge uh, that can be transformed in, um, in different products. Uh, that, that can be used for uh, building materials uh, and uh, depending on the process, also uh, fertilizers for agriculture. I have a question, Francesco, if yeah. I can. How much percentage of the treated water goes into the river as a clean river? You know, given 100 liters that you use in, in that you 
take it from Earth, how much do you give it back? Uh, about about uh, from ninety to ninety three percent. So we can we can say that the we in the leather as in the leather is gonna stay between ten percent around ten percent of the yeah. of the water that we used. Yes, this is oh, the that's a good number. Water use because all the other water uh, we go to the treatment plant and we will give back to to the environment after. Uh, depuration uh, purification treatments and the purification treatment is managed by public labs yes uh, it's uh, no it's, it's who who like, test who uh, test the leather to be yes the who test the leather can be uh, uh, depending on the district and, and on the plant uh, Tuscany and Veneto, for example, are different. Uh, the properties is uh, or can be of tanneries uh, with uh, also with municipalities as shareholders. Um, but the the, um, the most important thing is uh, there is a continuous monitoring operated by the laboratories of uh, uh, central treatment plants and overall by public authorities. Uh, that have a fixed system uh, for monitoring uh, uh, all the parameters uh, of uh, wastewater. This is nice to know because the people, you know, always think, oh, okay, we have all of these, but then we can skip the rules, but in this way we can't. Yeah. Thank well, you so much. Something else? Uh, okay, I have I, I finished. And in this chart, we can see the destination of all scrap, uh, all scrap of, uh, from semi-processed and finished leather from a tannery. And even in this case, the treatment of scrap in big central plant uh, transforms that scrap into intermediate material for other sector. Uh, for example, food industry, pharmaceutics, and agriculture. So now I leave the word to the next co-panelist, Franco. We will give you um, details uh, about uh, these end uses. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Francesco. Very, very interesting to see all the water. We, 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 where goes the water, actually? Yeah. But before... For to go to Franco, uh, there is one question that came a couple of times and is about uh, what about the finished product? What can we do about the finished product? And the reason why I'm asking this because we also we did uh, a talk, uh, Nico, with uh, uh, Nicolin Van Enter, and uh, she was talking about uh, municipal system where the, should, the goods need to be collected from the uh, municipality to be managed on a big scale. From the in the leather sector, is there any uh, movement or municipality that are looking into collecting the finished product and reuse in a certain way or give a second life? No, at the moment, no, no. Um, we we have uh, we can find uh, private companies uh, that decided to invest in this. Um, when I, I before I said that uh, uh, the property of uh, central treatment plant can be uh, shared also by municipalities is because uh, the treat wastewater treatment plant is used not just for industrial wastewater but also for domestic wastewater. So from wastewater coming from uh, private uh, homes. Okay, so I, I think that's also a very interesting topic that we'll need to, we will come soon. And Nico, maybe we can make another uh, live separately to talk uh, only about this, the, the yes. what we do with the finished product. Is anyone interested to take this and do something? But not only grinding it together because there are companies doing grinding where you put all things together but separating and give really a second a second life there there is so many questions in the q a section asking uh, what about the end, end goal end goal of the finished product what do we do with shoes what do we do with bags and i think we need to you know we need to study more and, and give you know the last piece of circularity yeah, and I think Franco can give us, uh, is, is starting already from the semi-finished product uh, and 
please go ahead, Franco, and tell us what uh, amazing project you are working on. Yes, uh, of course, we, we are, uh, I thank you for invitation and uh, we will try to explain, I will try to explain in my presentation how we uh, recovered from more than uh, 60 years the, the tunnel later by products and how, how we modify the, the recovering process, uh, uh, increasing always the, the attention to the environment and the quality and the efficiency of the products. I started to share my presentation. Uh, let me... Okay. So, um, First of all, I, I introduce my, my company, the company that I represent. I am the industrial director of ILSA. ILSA is an Italian company, part of the biggest group of uh, uh, companies that uh, uh, work in the production and the selling of biostimulant and agro specialties for agriculture. Uh, our total turnover is uh, more than 120 million of euro. And uh, uh, a big part uh, of this turnover comes from the uh, recovering process and production of fertilizer and biostimulants coming from leather, tanned leather byproducts. We have three main technologies uh, that we apply to the product. The first one that we uh, say commercially no uh, call agrogel is a, a thermobaric process where we use steam at high pressure and high temperature to transform the, the leather into uh, agricultural grade, grade gelatin in a solid form used as a fertilizer and biostimulant. The second process that we, we set up in the 90s, so more than 20 years ago, developing of course in the, every year, is based on uh, biocatalysis, so enzymatic hydrolysis, use of enzymes to uh, extract the, 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 the peptides and the protein material from the leather, uh, in particular in this, this case from uh, wet blue shavings and uh, scraps. And then we have uh, other technologies not used for, for uh, the, the, the leather Byproduct that is the supercritical fluid extraction. It means uh, extract active bio molecules from vegetal uh, uh, materials, from botanicals, and something like that to be used in uh, different uh, sectors like, of course, agriculture, but cosmetic, uh, food, feed, and so on. Where we are uh, present, of course, we started that our activity here in Italy, in Arzignano, because uh, we, 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 uh, we have to work at uh, uh, strong contact and the relation with the, the, the tanning clusters, uh, not only in Italy, but now we are starting to uh, develop our presence in, around the world. We, we founded uh, uh, a new uh, plant in uh, south of Brazil, where there is another important uh, cluster of tanneries. We started our activity last year in Egypt, and uh, now we are thinking to enlarge our uh, presence in uh, other countries where it's present uh, an important uh, concentration of tanneries like in uh, Spain, Portugal, in, uh, in the East, like uh, Bangladesh or in Mexico. And we are looking to, uh, to, to, to start uh, new activities in, this, in these areas in the next uh, two, three Very years. broad and very big. We have uh, uh, Adela asking also who can contact in Colombia, uh, Franco. So <laughs> you're getting a... <laughs> Colombia, yes. No. Uh, Colombia is uh, well. One one of the things I would like to explain later, but I can anticipate it, uh, is that of course we need a, a, a concrete feasibility of, of a project. It means that we need a, a presence of big quantities of 
tanning, uh, tanned leather and waste in concentrated in one, one area, in one region, because of course, uh, uh, just to be, to understand, we process here in Artignano more than 50,000 tons per year of leather by products. So the minimum quantity may be around 7,000, 8,000. So it is not easy to find this quantity around the world concentrated in one, one country or in one region. That's so why. you're recycling, so Franco, you're recycling the leather scrap as they are. You don't select anything. It's everything is good for you in your process to produce fertilizer. Oh, well, not exactly. Of course, we, we, uh, we select uh, mainly at the, 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 the last step of the tanning, that is the, the finishing step. We have to check uh, the, the amount of other uh, components that are added to the leather, maybe textiles, maybe rubber, maybe uh, glue that is not good for us. So we, we process leather, if it is clean leather, tanned clean leather, of course, 100%. Not uh, uh, goods, uh, uh, not well separated, like uh, goods with, uh, with uh, yeah. textiles. There's a, there's there is a question from Jessica, uh, Jessica Armonti. She's asking if the recycled in agriculture, it's all uh, just in Italy or in the, or in the European Union? Uh, it's a good question because uh, as I will show in my presentation, uh, up to now in Europe, uh, there, were, there were few countries where the, the, the fertilizers obtained from uh, leather and skins were allowed. Italy is one of that. Uh, last year, the, the EU uh, set up a new uh, regulation where uh, it is now permitted in, in, uh, in all Europe uh, to, to produce and to use fertilizer uh, coming from uh, uh, leather. Because so they, it's a good news. Yeah, yes, they move the attention and good the way they move the attention not to the chromium content that in the past it was considered as pollutant to the soil, chromium, total chromium. They move the attention to the real dangerous chromium that is chromium six, that is not inside the, the leather, that must, must, must not be present in our fertilizers as it is. And so they change the limit, limits from chromium three to chromium six. And so now we can do this product around the, the Europe. Uh, Perfect. Looking to this new, new limit. <clears throat> so Fabiana uh, explained to you uh, the, 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 the strategies that uh, EU is setting up to, to sustain the, the, the circular economy and the, the, the so-called new green deal. Now it means uh, support all the activities uh, putting uh, the attention on the, the, the environmental issues and the circularity of the economy. One of the strategy of the new Green Deal, uh, that is the strategy that is more important for our world, that is the world of agriculture, is the farm to fork strategy. This strategy uh, asks to the, 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 the companies that produce fertilizers, that produce products for agriculture, to increase the quality of their products, uh, avoiding uh, the losses of nutrients like a lot of uh, mineral fertilizers uh, do. They, they supply nutrients like nitrogen, like phosphorus to the plant, but the efficiency of these nutrients is very low. So one of the aim is to increase the efficiency, redu reducing this loss. And the other objective is the increasing of the organic farming. The organic farming must be increased of 25% the, uh, before 2030. And these two aspects are very related with the, our activity and uh, of course the fertilizers coming from uh, uh, leather byproducts because they are characterized uh, of a big efficiency uh, as the first uh, aim of the commission asked to do, and they are characterized to be allowed in organic farming because uh, 
lot of our products coming from leather scraps are allowed in organic farming. So the, 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 the tanning industry uh, can be very uh, active towards these, these goals uh, by means of collaboration with uh, companies like us or other companies that transform the waste into a valuable product. I have a question, Franco. There is a, there is a quick question from Jessica. She's asking, are fertilizer considered organic? Yes, they are considered organic. Um, because because the, 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 the organic uh, the, the, the com composition of these products are 98 99 percent organic matter so they are uh, considered as organic uh, organic fertilizers and allowed in organic farming uh, in English it is it is the same word but it's two different things organic material and allowed in organic farming Yes. Um, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, another small information I would like to, to explain uh, that is a, a, a new kind of fertilizers that in the last uh, five, six years started to be produced and used in agriculture are the biostimulants. Uh, biostimulants uh, that can be obtained from uh, the, the peptides and amino acids contained in the leather scraps. These biostimulants are characterized to uh, from are characterized by uh, three important aspects. The first one is that this product uh, help the, the, the farmers to reduce the nutrient losses. So let us remember always that the first aim of the farm to fork strategy, reduce losses. This product, as I told you, have a very high efficiency because the, the, the nutrients that are applied to the plant reach the plant in a very high uh, percentage. The second is the biostimulant, like the biostimulant coming from leather, are obtained from renewable source the skin, the leather is a renewable, a renewable resources. And this is another aspect that is positive for the farm to fork strategy. And the third one is the, 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 the most important that uh, for the circular economy. So we have to use raw materials to increase the use of raw materials that are considered waste from a different uh, activities so to reduce the waste stream and the reprocess, reuse, and recover, and this is another important things that uh, leather industry can do uh, together with the uh, uh, fertilizer industries. Uh, Franco, I have one more question. We see that uh, more people are writing in the chat from different country in the world that they want to uh, give you. So I think you will have a, a good. Uh, Business. I mean, the, 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 the concept is clear. You need to have big volume to uh, start this process. But what brands can do to help them? Can they do anything if a brand want to uh, start to reuse uh, their scrap leather? What do you think is the best way? Well, normally the brands uh, uh, works with uh, with. Uh, say subcontractors, companies that produce for them the, 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 the goods. And a good way is, I think, to ask them to, to, to demonstrate, to, to, to try to find out uh, companies. And of course, in Italy, it's not so difficult, but we receive material not only in Italy, but for foreign countries to ask to uh, send their waste to, to uh, recovery, like uh, a lot of companies here in Italy, I'm thinking uh, two, three brands that uh, uh, every year come here to visit because they do not send us the, 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 the leather scraps, but they know that the company that the subcontractors that work with them send us the, 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 the waste. So they are interested to check if it really recovered. For example, we, we, we can produce a certificate of recovery of uh, this quantity coming from this company. So 
uh, I think that the best way is to ask to the, the companies that work with them to uh, prefer uh, recovery of the waste instead of landfill or uh, burning or some other destination that are of course allowed but not towards the, the, the circular. So basically the factory goes directly to the, uh, the, the brand, sorry, goes directly to the factory to check. It doesn't come directly to you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Clear, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, going back to the, the one of your previous questions, so is it allowed in, in Europe to use uh, leather uh, derived fertilizer in agriculture? This is the EU regulation I was talking about, 2019, uh, 1009 of 2019. It is the new regulation that defines the, the, the kind of material, the kind of raw material that can be used to produce fertilizers. And if you look inside these 11 categories, six of them start from waste. So it means that uh, the, the, the EU is focusing a lot the attention to the waste, the recovery of the waste, the reuse of the waste. And uh, for example, the, the, the CMC uh, 10 is exactly the category that uh, allow to use uh, uh, as a raw material product after the end point of animal, pro animal origin product after the end point. So it means after the planning process. So the, 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 this is allowed not only in Italy now, but in, in Europe. And of course, the, the single countries can decide to accept or to be more uh, strict in, uh, in, uh, in this way. But it is allowed in Europe and not only in Europe, in Brazil, in other countries, it is normally used. When I, uh, when I talk to uh, this, uh, talks about uh, circular economy and so on. I'm used to show this, this slide because I like it very much. The first, on, the, your, on your right, you see uh, an important chemist and uh, agronomist from uh, Germany, Justus von Liebig, that it, for us it's important because firstly, uh, understood that the, the plants feed food, um, the plants, uh, are, are, are the food for the plants are mainly uh, chemical elements like nitrogen, like phosphorus and like potassium. So he stated the, the start of the fertilizers as we know now. But in all his books, in all these studies, he always stressed the attention to the, the, the what we now call product stewardship. So he said that no industrial activity will survive if uh, uh, they start without a strong knowledge of how to use their waste. Okay, uh, it means that when we, we produce a new goods, we don't have to to think only how the goods can be used, but we have to think how the waste that I will produce can be used. And and uh, uh, it was more than one century ago, but. Uh, <laughs> It was it was right, <laughs> I think. It was a vision. Yes, we're talking about these issues now, and a lot of industry have, uh, have difficult uh, periods, uh, mainly for, for for the problem they have to find out uh, the, the destination, uh, not a uh, not pollutant destination to their waste. Not the case for leather because uh, leather started many many years ago to leather industry to to reprocess and reuse their waste. This is a very important point, uh, Franco. Actually, we, we, we are going to publish soon an interview with uh, Yofi Ignacia, a professor uh, in a uh, Dutch school, where she said really the change from a, a linear design to circular design. Yeah. You really need to uh, approach the design in a completely different uh, way. You need to think about your way. So it's, I think of, it's a very yeah. valid point, especially the subject of today. Von Liebig uh, uh, understood it uh, many, many years ago, as we, see, we can see <laughs> here. And on the left, I, I show you what is the, the first patent we find in the bibliography. Uh, it's a patent uh, from the United States in the beginning of the 19th, 
where two, two guys from Tennessee <laughs> invented a, a, a reactor where there was the possibility to transform a leather waste, chrome or vegetable tanned leather into a fertilizer with a very good characteristics. They already understood not only how to transform the waste into a, a product, but they understood that the product was highly efficient because it was a, a, a fertilizer rich in nitrogen, a fertilizer that um, release the nitrogen during all the entire growing season of the plant, not in a few days, but in weeks and uh, sometimes in months. It's like plants once and uh, uh, like. And the other is the efficiency, the high efficiency of the product because the nitrogen is not washed away from, uh, from water, from rain, and something like that, like, uh, for instance, uh, for uh, mineral nitrogen fertilizers. So the, 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 our process, of course, modified and improved a lot, but comes from uh, many, many years ago. Well, here I, I, I try to summarize for, for, uh, for people that is not exactly coming from uh, agriculture, why these kind of fertilizers are used and appreciated. Uh, fertilizers coming from uh, leather scraps are, of course, rich of uh, uh, proteins, uh, peptides, and amino acids. The, the kind of uh, nutrient, the main nutrient is nitrogen and organic carbon, and the, the, they have the capacity, as uh, I told you uh, now, that uh, uh, the release of the nitrogen, so the absorption the nitrogen from the plant is not immediate, but it is released slowly, slowly. so it is called slow release nitrogen fertilizers, and can accompany the, 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 the plant growth during all the, the, the season. They have biostimulant property, and they uh, can help the, the carrying of uh, other nutrients like uh, microelements, like uh, other minerals towards the plants. So they are re really appreciated. Our technology uh, are mainly three. So we transform the leather scraps mainly in, uh, in two ways, but we have three technologies and uh, he explained better now. The first uh, technology we use in the, the oldest one, that is the thermobaric hydrolysis. We take the leather scraps, tanned or wet blue, uh, uh, oh, sorry, wet blue or uh, semi-finished or finished leather, and we apply to this leather scraps uh, steam at high pressure in a controlled way inside the rotating, the big rotating reactors. Uh, and in this way, the, the, the leather is transformed, is washed, cleaned, of course, from a lot of uh, uh, substances that are not proteins. And uh, they are transformed uh, into a solid fertilizer that is used applying to the soil. The second technology is quite different. Uh, we use biocatalysis. It means we use enzymes to uh, transform, to extract the, 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 the protein content uh, of the wet blue shavings in, into water medium to clean them from uh, chromium and from other uh, materials and to uh, hydrolyze to a lower molecular weight in amino acids and uh, peptides. This product is not solid but is liquid. It is used as a biostimulant because it has specific action uh, increasing the, the health and the, 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 the strength of the plants. And of course, is an important nutrient for the plants. Then we have a third technology, as I told you, but is not applied to do uh, leather byproducts, that is the supercritical fluid extraction. So as uh, I told you, the raw materials we use are shown in this picture to be more clear. <laughs> 
uh, we have on, on the right we have leather shavings on the left we have leather wet blue leather scraps in the center we have crust and semi finished leather these all the the kind of these are the the kind of leather waste we process the final product is a, a fertilizer allowed in organic farming uh, as the regulation 889 uh, state and, and for this reason uh, the, the majority of the product we we have on the market are allowed in organic farming we, you see we have more than 80 product different products uh, and uh, more than 55 60 percent are allowed in organic farming uh, the first one in the solid the black product is a granular product solid with a um, good quantity of proteins content and the second one is the product obtained from uh, uh, enzymatic hydrolysis okay we have now uh, we even they even ask us uh, if you to be more sustainable if your production uh, is using uh, let's say you you are reusing uh, your uh, let's say your renewable uh, energy in your company. Yes, yes, we 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 are uh, it's one of my 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 <laughs> most important uh, work is uh, to to reduce the. the the energy consumption of our process, we reuse a lot of energy, we recover a lot of the energy we produce, uh, the steam, the, the heat that we produce is not discharged, but is reused inside the process to, to reduce the, the consumption of oil derived uh, fuels. And, uh, and of course, we try to reduce the energy, the water consumption, we reprocess a lot of our waters, we try in our activity to, to be more uh, sustainable as possible. That's, that's great, Franco. I think that all the project, all the way uh, you guys working and, and the scope of your business is very uh, important to have leather more circular. And that's good also you can reuse your energy. I will try to conclude because people are, are, are yes, yes. Getting, is getting a bit late. I have only last last slide that is only the the other interest the other markets we are focused on not only in leather in uh, not only in agriculture but in the leather industry uh, we produce uh, uh, amino acids and peptides that are used as uh, retaining fillers in cosmetics in building materials uh, and in bioplastic and biopolymers because we are working now with uh, big companies that produce uh, bioplastics they can reduce the quantity of oil derived uh, polymers substituting these uh, materials with uh, our biopolymers because protein is a biopolymer so it's not only agriculture but other interest thank you cool thank you everyone uh, fabian i think we can uh, close the webinar like this yeah, and it was great to meet you, everyone. We will, Nicola. We will have another webinar next week. Yes, we have in two weeks actually. The the twenty third Tuesday, the twenty third, we have the next webinar that would be uh, linked to this one because it's about chemicals management and the safety of a product. So don't forget to subscribe to the to the event, and also in between on the Tuesday, the sixteenth of February. There's actually even more interested, uh, interesting uh, topic. There's the Linea Pelle uh, trend presentation for summer, spring 22. We will not be there, but I think that will be a, a more fun and interesting also for designers and brand. If you have still a question that wasn't answered in the meantime, you can write to the uh, email address that you are uh, seeing now and um, Nico, I think we have to thank everybody the, for yes. all the questions we got. So many people join us today and to our guest. And uh, remember to follow us on uh, Sustainable Talks with NNN, Instagram and YouTube. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for Fabiana, Francesco, Franco. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to you. Everybody. And don't hesitate to put uh, your uh, question to our sustainability team. Bye. Great. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye. 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 Bye.